2021 and the stream is live. So today I'm going to be working a little bit more on the automation sort of framework idea that I had before. Uh, I finally conceptually understand now why this didn't work before, or I should say why whenever I've tried this previously I had issues. So the idea that I had is that you have locators that return targets. The issue was whenever you wanted to locate an element that was on a page, because the locator would be for an element, but the locator would have to be executed both on a page and then it would have to be executed on the X path on that page. So you'd have to get, so the first locator would be by name, so it would name the element as, say, the login page, or name the uh, element as, say, the, uh, like, login, or sorry, username field or password field or something but then that would have an XPath associated with it. So what I think I need is I need the idea of like a compound kind of locator. Uh, the first level would locate the page, the second level would locate the XPath on the page. So the page actually needs to store its own version of the locator. And yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. I don't know if we're gonna actually get to that part today. Um, but I know what I am going to get to, which is the Java uh, proxying. Uh, because I need to remember how to do this. Uh, I've done this before, I just can't remember how to do it. So let us try to figure that one out. Um, so I know that it is proxy.newproxy instance dynamic. So is it only through the class loader? If that's true, that would be annoying. That you have to use the class loader, really? Um, that's from what I see, that's what it looks like. Uh, Java proxy class. So I'm trying to look up, really quickly looking up how this actually works. Yeah, so it is through the class loader. Okay, that's, hmm. Hmm. Actually, I think that's fine because we could just grab the, um, okay, so we need to implement invocation handler. That's what this needs to do. Um, so how does it actually create the page? Or how would it actually create it? So it'd be invocation handler. All right, let me think through this. So this would be the page proxy. So the idea is that since, um, the idea is that um, I've built automation tools before using stuff like Selenium. One of the issues you run into is that you really benefit from multiple inheritance, but Java doesn't support that. Uh, so you kind of need to hack it in. Um, and there are various ways to do that. But one way I'm thinking of trying to do it is through um, defining the page objects as interfaces and then having a proxy or having some kind of uh, factory that generates them and you know you give it an interface basically and it populates the interface or it, pop it creates a backing class and then will um, use that you know basically implement the methods for you is what I'm trying to say in not a very good way. Uh, so if we make this a protected, and I'm going to map it from the element name to the actual element itself, so it would be named to element, and this is just going to be a new hash map. Uh, I don't know why you want a KV there. You already know what it is. <clears throat> so this is in the implementation. Uh, so the way that this would work is I believe it's um, probably need a new not a new class we need a new package and then a new class inside of it god what am I doing new package factories because we're gonna need that this is going to be a page factory right so you can say page factory and then you would say public page or no, public would be a type of T, and then it would be from interface. 
uh, and then you'd give it a class which uh, would be anything that extends page basically would be fine uh, and so that would actually be T that extends page right can you not do you not like that why do you not like that actually uh, class oh I know why because it's a class let's say P P there and then what you need to do is before the return type you actually need to say P extends page that's what it is and this should do all the type checking for us so any it'll basically return something of the same type right okay and then the code that I found for this would be do 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 where is it it is a proxy a new proxy instance of I don't know why so I guess what does proxy do so if I said proxy dot new proxy instance interfaces specified interfaces dispatches okay actually that's hmm the specified interfaces that dispatches method indications hmm so were that true what that would tell me is this dot get class dot get class loader or no it would be uh, page dot get class this isn't the page this is the page class so yes it'd be page class dot get class loader because it's a class reference dot, yeah that's actually fine so the interfaces would only be the page class which uh, can you not the actual syntax vertebrae literal in Java. I wish I could remember. It's a new class, right? New class that class that. Yes. And then it's the invocation handler, and that is the new um, page proxy. Correct? And you don't like that. No, you can import that. Right, okay. So the actual proxy is going to be. Wait. Hmm. Right, now I'm confused. Okay, so this is proxying that. This invocation handler. Okay. So this will actually be the proxy. Um, or no, it won't. Oh god, I'm so confused as to what this actually returns. I don't actually know... I think that's right. Alright, let's assume that that's... Alright, let's just assume that we do this. Because this should basically force that whoops huh yeah confused can't use the variable var without initializer but it is initialized oh yes no it's not I need the equals right that's the problem I don't know if this uses the same instance or not it turns a proxy instance for the specified interfaces But that's an invocation handler. Oh, does the can the invocation handler not actually store data? Surely that's not true. Uh no, it must. Is that true? Can that can that not actually store data? Because that would be kind of annoying if it can't. <clears throat> no, it looks like it can. So there's, no, there's a map of string method methods. Uh, invoke object proxy. The result equals methods dot that. 
jeez. So. Is this created from the target? It tells you when to record how long they take to execute. Define him they're capable of wrapping the real object. Oh, okay. So that has to be the target. Okay. So if that's true. Interesting. Oh, okay. So that can wrap a real version of it. But it'll be an instance that will be returned. Yeah, I still don't understand. Still don't fully understand. Um, hmm. Well, I guess we can just do this. It's probably fine. Um, yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, Almighty. So I'm working on a theory for an automation framework that I had. Um, I've worked with a couple automation frameworks in the past, and I've just had some ideas on my own. Uh, basically, this one, the idea, basically the idea, or sorry, the stuff that I've worked on in the past, the tests are, you know, very long and very complicated. Uh, you could imagine like a web test to, um, you know, test like the tax forms for like the U.S. government. That's not what I worked on, but it's very close. Um, you know, they're very long, there's lots of things to fill out, and the framework that I'd like to build would have the ability to like pause and rewind the tests and edit them kind of on the fly, as opposed to like, you know, Selenium sort of tests that you have to write and then recompile and everything. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm just thinking through how proxies work again. I can't remember. Um, uh, I believe this will work. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's yeah. If I, if I can remember how proxies work, it'll be. It might actually do what I want. One of the other issues that I found is that um, the page object pattern is kind of a pain. Um, yeah, I know it's an unsafe cast. That's fine. Page object pattern is kind of a pain because it you usually run into scenarios. Uh, yeah, I am a, well, test engineer, more sort of, um, yeah, you call me a test engineer. Um, yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, I mean, the technical word is like software developer, but, you know, our team ended up writing all the tests, and yeah, it's kind of a fun, kind of a fun project. Um, create a page factory, so... Okay, so this is fine. I'm invoking a proxy. Hmm. Just double check this. Let me see here. Grab this, grab that. Oh, nope, that's not where I wanted that. Let me just see what happens when I do all of this. Page proxy. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, no, I can answer my own questions much easier. Okay. So, info. But no, this is always guaranteed to create a new proxy, so that won't that won't matter. Never mind. Uh, okay, then that does answer my questions. Um, but, okay. Hmm. Okay, so never mind. I'm just going to have to test this. Uh, yeah, I'm actually a software developer. Um, like, I know Java and I know several other sort of languages. Um, our team was basically like the testing team for a website, and we chose like Java and Selenium as our kind of like tools to test that website. 
and it's it is a massive website with you know hundreds you know ten almost I think it's almost close to a thousand pages or something it's it's insane how big it is and there's you know tons of tests on it and it's just it's insane so uh, trying to work with uh, you know hard coded tests in that case it doesn't work very well I mean we've managed to get it to run but yeah. But I'm currently leaving that job, and I'm just as, you know, on my own time, I'm trying to mess with some stuff. And, yeah, I can't stop thinking about this idea, so I want to try to mess with it and see if I can get it to work. Uh, what am I trying to do? I want to test that proxy factory. Uh, no, page factory. Factory, and then this will be the page. Will be factory dot from interface login class. Nope, login page dot class. Let me just see. Does this actually crash? Oh, nice. Yeah, I've worked with, uh, with Spring Boot before. It's really cool. Um, we actually use uh, kind of Spring in our, in our automation framework, and it makes things a lot easier with the dependency injection. Um, yeah. Yeah, Java's a really cool language. Uh, what, uh, what version are you learning? So this didn't crash. That, that gives me hope. I hope that that doesn't return null. That would be nice. Of course it does. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? Uh, so why does that not work? So you didn't throw an exception. Okay. It's not a proxy instance. If the interface's argument is null, or if the invocation handler h is null, Neither of those things are true. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, Java 11. Or, yeah, sorry, Java 8, Java 11, stuff like that. Uh, for context, this is 13 right now. Uh, I think it displays as... Yeah, it's 1.13, so it's Java version 13. Okay, yeah, Java 11 is cool. I forgot what they... I forgot if they had var in 11. I don't remember. I mean, I can double check, actually. Let me see here. Did I do this? Are you going to complain? You're not, so it must have... Okay, so 11 must have var. Okay, you got a cool version of Java. The project that I work on, we were stuck in eight, <laughs> so we don't have all the nice stuff. We have we have lambdas. Yeah, well, var. The cool thing, the thing about var is that it doesn't work like it does in JavaScript. It's actually in Java, it's actually strongly typed. Um, it's the same as it is in like C sharp. It just interprets the type for you automatically. So whenever you change between like in C sharp, it's a lot more useful because you can change between like maps and dictionaries and stuff or yeah dictionaries and lists and stuff and you don't ever have to re you know rewrite the types but java doesn't have the same stuff java doesn't have like indexers so you can't do the same stuff with it but i'm lazy so i like to let the compiler figure out the type for me now why do you think that is null?
very confused as to why that's no. Because we're returning the proxy, that shouldn't... That shouldn't be no. Why is it? been far too long since I've done proxies. But I seem to remember this issue at one point. be crazy. So if I debug this, go here, no. Okay. Oh, that is null. Okay. Wait. Is it? It seems to point to a value. Huh. I'm very confused. Uh, are you talking about uh, this syntax? Yeah, so basically what this is, is, um, let me exit debug mode so I can explain it. Uh, basically, what this is doing is it's just the generics. Uh, if you're not familiar with generics, they're their own thing. Basically what it's telling it is, um, I'm trying to force Java, it's hard to explain. Um, so basically I want to put a class here, I want to reference a class. But specifically, I want a class that extends from page, and I also want to return the same type of class. So basically, I have to tell it with this uh, generic line here, this inside the brackets, it's a, you know, you declare like this sort of variable p, and this p is going to stand for a class that extends page. And so whatever I put, whatever class I reference here, this from interface is going to return that. So if I go over into uh, factory, See how it fills in login page here? Because I actually put login page in here. It references the class, and so it suddenly knows that it's going to return login page. And so that means that this page variable here is going to be of type login page. It basically just, it's a way to get compile time checking on everything. Um, I could just use object in all of those, but I'd prefer to have the compiler actually help me. Um, Generics can get really, really nasty <laughs> if you're not careful. Uh, for instance, this. <laughs> this is horribly fun, <laughs> but it works. Uh, I would try to go through all of this, but it would take forever to explain. Uh, long story short, this is what I worked out yesterday. So if you want to see, if you want to see me work through all of this, just go to the stream from yesterday. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah. Uh, I had to recreate most of that from memory because all the other stuff's on my work computer. But yeah, generics are fun. In Java, they kind of, they're not as powerful as they are in other languages. C Sharp does really well with them. Hmm. I really don't understand why that's returning null. That's really confusing me. Do, do. 
this is proxy class dot instruct new handler or more simply dot new instance public final not abstract extends given that each proxy has its own associated invocation handler yeah, I really don't understand why that's returning null that really shouldn't be doing that um, wedge. All right, let me try, let me see if I can get it to do, or to open the debug menu, because I think something is actually broken. Okay, so proxy points to an actual proxy. However, the inspector thinks that it's null. That's, I don't understand that. I really don't. I might just be crazy. This, oh, this doesn't point to, can it not, no, that's a class, it's definitely not null, it is to login page, okay, does it not have a class loader, is that what it, no, it has a class loader, hmm, oh god, I must be going crazy. I don't know how it can point to both the proxy and null, because, okay, well, if that's true, hmm, what happens? Uh, oh, you won't let me do that, right. Okay, so if I rerun this, uh, oh god, I hate this view so much. So if I debug this, yes, switch. Okay, so A points to null, but this points... I don't understand that. How does that point to null? Huh. God, what do, we, what do I have to do here? Okay. No two elements in the interface array may refer to this to identical class. Sure, class object a given interface array must represent interfaces, yes. Okay. All interfaces must be visible. Am I... No, that's... Wait. Am I crazy? No, I'm not crazy. That is definitely an interface. Okay, not primitive types, no two elements are the same. Okay, all interfaces must be visible by name through the specified class loader. CL expression must be true. Yes, it should be. All of the types referenced by all public must be inherited interfaces, and those inherited by their super interfaces must be visible. Those should be on the package. All of them are public anyway any set of member methods main signature no may not exceed the limits it's not exceed the limits imposed by yeah that's fine Part of the proxy class instance interface handle proxy huh yet none of those are null it somehow is not liking that. All interfaces of this element are null, or the invocation handler is null. That's there's a null pointer. Returns a proxy instance. Yet it does not. Huh. All right, let's just see. Uh, oh, why does this not actually why can this not be cast to that? No. This can definitely be cast to that. Um, you can't tell the type. Oh no, right, you can't because... Okay, I understand. I understand that. Alright. So I can do this. Definitely that. Just simplify this ever so slightly. Okay. So you think that that's null. Why does it think that that's null? Also, I don't want to be in debug anymore. So, sure. 
Let's just try that. Surely if that... Surely that should do something. But that does not throw a null pointer? What on earth? That is the weirdest thing. So weirded out by that. So let's see. Okay, that's null. That, that is so weird. That points to an instance, the two string gives you null. God, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> wow. Proxies are much stranger than I remember. Okay, so apparently that does work. Um, I don't know if it creates a new instance of a handler every time. But okay, this is where we're actually going to need the proxy um, variable here. that, and this should turn cast p, return proxy, okay, cool. Uh, but no, it shouldn't. Uh, this should just store that type. No, it shouldn't. Um, it actually doesn't matter, because the cast is going to happen no matter what. Um, absolutely, we'll return the type you want. Okay. So if we have the class, what we should be able to do is we should be able to... Actually, what type does this even have? What type do you even have? Um, oh, but you'll have... No, you won't. What type will you have? Because your superclass will be proxy. Uh, what was the simple name? Let's just check that. Let's see what this actually does. So it does just generate a proxy class. That's fine. Does it generate, whoops, generate the same one every time? Curiously, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So it seems to, okay, that's good. Good to know. So logically, this returns null, so this would, if we log this, surely if we call page dot, uh, say it's login, uh, or username, call that, we should get a print from that. Yes, okay. So that makes sense. Now the question is, how do I get... I can get rid of that. Question being, how do I get... Actually, this shouldn't be called this. This should be called... Um, invocation handler, uh, which I believe is all shift R, yeah, invocation, so page is the page, invocation handler, cool, okay, I'm trying to think, so if we were to do proxy, uh, proxy, get class, would it be get? Just try get methods. Uh, and then we'll stream that. Oops. Just grab the methods. And then each one uh, logger uh, info. Er, yeah, logger info. And then we can just map that. 
and say uh, method get name. You know what a method? No, that's not right. You know what the method is? Yes. So what methods does that even have? Whoops, that's not right. Okay, so it does actually have what we want. Okay, so those are methods that get added to the proxy class, the actual class of the proxy itself. Okay, that's good. Um, now we just need to filter out the ones that return filter uh, method to uh, method dot get return type and then I believe it's uh, element dot class dot is assignable from and then I believe it's method dot return type so we want to filter out the ones that return a element so that will give us what we want to inject into the invocation handler and then the invocation handler will actually handle all of the data storage, which is what I want. Let's see, okay, perfect. All right, so what that is now is that the um, invocation handler is going to be this new page invocation handler here. So what we will do, that is our proxy. What we want to do is, in the invocation handler, we want to add an element. Let's say public void add element, add element, and we say a name, and then element, element, sure, the name to element, uh, element dot nope not put right and then it'll be a uh, name associate that to element and then this we will say um, we will return it'll be a name to element we're going to get and it'll say method dot get name nope method dot get name Okay, so basically what we want to do is instead of adding that, or instead of mapping that there, instead of printing it, uh, we would like to, we don't need to map it, no actually yes we do, uh, so for each name, uh, yeah for each name, what we want to do is we want to do uh, invocation handler dot add element name and I'm just going to reformat this so that it makes a lot more sense so that is a filter that is a map that is a for each okay and we're going to say new element okay so now what should happen if I did this right um, let's assume that I did. Uh, if I say username and login, uh, it isn't username and login, it's uh, password, right? Yeah, password. Now, if I do this, what I should end up with this is the crazy part, is using only the interface alone, it should create a map of these, uh, of username to element for me, just based on the return type of that method. And it looks like it did, yeah. It created an element there and then a second element there. They're both different. And so yeah, invoking, invoking the methods just using the interface alone now works. So I will call that a win. Uh, now we no longer actually need this login page. So yeah, that's fun. Um, 
completely useless. Java will now implement our interfaces for us. Okay. So now to figure out what to actually do with that. Um, so we need a page in a page in context locator. Yeah, we do. Okay. So now what we should be able to do. Mm, no, that wouldn't work. Um, so we have an element in context. But actually, what we need is an element on page locator. Yes. Page locator. So this one will be like the version one of that, of the uh, element locator. So it'll be a locator, and the type is going to return an element. Okay. So, yep, can import target, and you're going to have issues with that. Yep, sure. So, if we say public element, oops, element, element on page locator, uh, very public, nope. Um, what we can do is we can parameterize this with some uh, p extends page, I think. And then, if that's true, yeah, because we'll need that. And then this is going to be a function. And it's going to take p as the argument and return e as the, um, or return an element as the uh, thing. So this getter method. So we keep that. And then we're going to have a reference to that function. Probably want it protected. I know generally in Java you're supposed to use private, but I, I don't really care right now. So say this dot getter method equals getter method. Okay, it cannot be resolved to a type because I have misspelled it, I believe. Oh no, it's because, uh, right. Uh, that should be fine, actually. Oh, because the bounding isn't that strong, right? Uh, uh, I mean, I guess I can parameterize that. Sure. Uh, no, because that wouldn't work. Wait, no, yes it would. What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, we'd have to give it the getter method, and then... Right. Problem is, we only get the execution context. We don't actually get the thing that we would need. Um, okay. So there's a couple ways to handle that. I mean, we definitely want to... Hmm. What is the way to handle that? Because basically we need to get a page. Okay, well what we can do is we can do context.get and then we can say... No, we actually can't because we don't know no, I guess we can. We know the type. Wait, that's a that's a type, right? Get class. Uh, get class. But you, you cannot make reference from type object, but you're not that type. Okay. Will that actually work? Doesn't like that. Okay. Oh, it's a type, it's not a class. Uh, always forget how you're supposed to convert a type to a class in this case. Or can we even do that? I actually don't remember. So this can locate an element on a page. Um, what that would mean, is what we can do. 
can say given this, given some class, we have that, then we can store that, at least temporarily to make this work. Uh, dot equals page class. Right, no, not to this. We don't need that. We don't need that. Let's say page class. Uh, dot get. You already have the class. Oh, you're an instance, right. What am I doing? Ah, uh, that's what I want. You can say dot get simple name. Right, and then we use that. And so this should give us an instance of the page. And so uh, what we can do, we're using context.get. Actually, we can actually strongly enforce that that will get a type P. And then we can say, uh, getter method, I believe we can invoke that. Dot accept, no, apply. No, not and then apply. We apply that to the page. That will give us the element. Yes. So basically, we want to return that. And so that gets us from, yes, so given that there is a page whose name is equivalent to its class, this will be able to locate an element on that page. Okay. So, if that is the case, we can uh, uncomment all this, reimport everything. Uh, yep, that's fine, that's fine, and that's fine. Okay, yeah, 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 you're gonna have issues with that, I got it. So, this locates the page, that's fine. Actually, we will set it to a login page. And what we will do is we will actually just move all of this down. Uh, actually, nope, we'll keep the factory up there. And then we will just say uh, factory.from interface. And this, we'll just say login page dot class dot get name or dot get simple name. Uh, at which point, I think I need to change the element locator here. Oh no, get simple name. I did right because of course I did. Uh, nope, keep the factory there. We can just get rid of these. They're junk now. Okay, so this should have the page in context. That's fine. Actually, what I will do is I will more strongly require this here. And then it's the element in context locator. Actually, this is going to be new element on page locator. It's the page class is going to be login page dot class. My getter method is going to be given a page. We're going to say page, um, let's say click the submit button. Oh, you don't like that. Why do you not? Oh, I know why you don't like that. Given some page to page dot submit. Can't even generate the error. <laughs> no type. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, you can't locate given page, given login page. Yeah, yeah, I actually like that. That's amazing. Um, you wouldn't allow me to do, would you? That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Oh, there's no way that worked. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, given that that's true, we still need the class though. That's unfortunate. Still need the class to actually invoke a getter. But given that, should actually be able to just copy this in here. 
and it should be say the username. Okay, now we can get rid of these weak bindings here. And in theory, if I run this uh, and I use new, okay, in theory, that should be a completely strongly bound system there. So I'll shift X and then J. Oh, that's perfect. Actually, I should allow elements to have a name. That way I can... That way I can actually see what their name is. Um, like element, uh, string name, string name. Uh, say protected string name is that this dot name equals name. Sure. Clicking element name and input into element name. Okay. The page factory is going to have an issue. That's actually fine because we actually have the name for you. There we go. So now, if I did that correctly, it should say that it's going to navigate to the login page. It should say that it's going to click the submit button, which actually we should just say uh, do that. Input one, two, three, uh, I don't know, sure, username one. Just say input username into the username field and then click on the submit button. Okay. Perfect. I knew I could make this work. All right, so. Uh, I need to think about the next thing. So the execution context. Um, okay. I know what I want to do. I need to change so I want to call this program or this library, I want to call it test builder, and the um, thing that I want to enforce sort of on users is that they have to they have to create an instance of it. And so what I will do. Hmm, yeah. What I will do is I will make this test builder thing store page factory. Actually, I don't want this to be that. I want this to actually be an interface. And yeah. Hmm. We will actually make it, we'll actually move everything into a builder, is what we'll do. So I guess we will have a private. Yeah, private. Uh, it will be class and it will implement itself, which I'm fairly certain is allowed. Oh right, you can't do that on interfaces, that's what I remember. Huh. I mean, I can just make this public for the sake of it, and then we can just make the constructor private. So we'll have a public class builder. I mean, interface members are public no matter what. You can't make them anything else. So there's no point. Uh, and then we we'll just say public uh, test builder build. So this, for the moment, will just return a new instance of implementation. But forces people to go through the builder. And so what we can say is var uh, framework equals new test builder dot builder dot build dot build and so what is the type here? Java.link.object? No it isn't. It absolutely is not. Test builder cannot be resolved to a type. Why can it not be resolved to a type?
Okay, there we go. Now it's actually thinking about it. There we go, yeah. Okay. So in this case, we're going to have a protected page factory. This will be the page factory. And so here, uh, just page factory is a new oh, page factory. It's a new page factory. Okay. Then this will have a public uh, register page method here. This will be a class. Uh, and we have to put the p generics here. So p extends page. Is that true? I don't remember. Sure, page class. Yeah. Why do you not like that? It's not invalid, you're invalid. Um, yeah, okay. So that's because that's invalid, yeah. Cool. All right, so this is gonna complain now because it doesn't actually implement that method. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say protected, uh, and this is going to be a set of pages. I'm just gonna say pages. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a java.util. Actually, we can just put this in here for now. We can just use a hash set for the moment. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Okay. And then what this is going to do is this is going to cause the page factory to uh, generate a page to say pages.add page factory dot from interface page class. Okay, so this registers a page into the test builder. And so whenever we call uh, public void run, uh, this will automatically run all of the tests. So we're going to say public void uh, void add test. And this is going to be some kind of test, not text, test. Okay, uh, actually these don't need the public modifier. And we're going to have a protected, and I guess it's going to be a list of test, and it's going to be tests equals new array list. Nope, 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 none of that. Nope, none of that either. Array list, yep. No, you don't need the type, you know the type. It's that, yes. Okay, then we just add unimplemented methods. Okay, so this is going to be test, uh, tests, dot add, so dot add, test, cool. And then on run, uh, we are going to say for uh, test, test, and tests, uh, we're going to create a new execution context. So context equals new execution context, default execution context. Default execution. Execution context, yes. Then we're going to say pages dot for each. Or no, we're going to say, yeah, dot for each. Uh, context dot add, or no. Make the page do context dot add or dot put sorry dot put yes and the thing that we're going to put is a type of page it's going to be page dot get page dot get class dot get simple name uh, which is incorrect because the proxy uh, will actually Yeah, actually, that's wrong. This needs to be a map uh, from string to, uh, it's not pages, it is page class to instance. Or, yeah, might as well just have class. Uh, and then something that extends page. 
just so that we can capture the name. And that's going to be a new hash map. Oh my god, you don't need the KV. Okay, this is the map from that to that, cool. And this is going to be pages.put, and it will be page class .get simple name. .put, uh, because that doesn't exist anymore, page class to instance .put, this should give me the instance, but p does extend page. Or string, right, okay. Uh, it is not get simple name, it is that. Yes, okay. So pages dot for each, uh, pages, no. Page to instance dot for each entry. We're going to say entry dot put, it's going to be entry dot, oh jeez, it is confused. Of course it's confused. Dot, I believe it's get value. I'm gonna guess. Uh, page to entrance dot uh, entry set. Dot for each entry, it would be entry dot get key dot get simple name. Simple name. Name. Please. There we go. Okay. Basically what that's going to do is that's going to, for each test, it's going to spin up a new execution context, and then it's going to add all of the registered pages into the execution context, and then it's going to run the test. So, in theory, all we should have to do, we should no longer have to actually build the page factory ourselves, but the page, we have the, uh, have the test, which is fine. We don't need to spin up the execution context. All we need to say, we don't even need to do that. All we need to say is framework dot add test uh, test, and we can say uh, framework dot register page, and say login page dot class, and then we can say framework dot run. Cool. And what that should do. So that should move all that logic into, uh, well actually we can just put this down here. Okay. Yeah, so we build the test and then the framework should automatically spin up the page, generate the proxy, put all the elements into it, and then insert the page into the execution context and then we just run everything. So that should work. Oh, whoops, no, that's not what I wanted. Hooray, okay. Um, I have been doing this for over an hour. My brain is completely fried. So I am gonna just take a break. Uh, well, not take a break. I'll probably take like a 24 hour break, a 23 hour break. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching.